Welcome to Scorched Earth and the general reading for the sign of Sagittarius, Sun, Moon or Ascendant for the month of June 2023. I hope you're well. I'm using the, um, what's it called now? Tower of the Abyss um, for you today. Uh, before we get started, if the reading resonates with you and you'd like to go a little bit deeper, there will be an extended you can access at the end. That is link number one in the description box. The second link is to my private community, the Order of the Phoenix over on Circle. You can get access to all the extended content for no extra cost over there and get to hang out with an amazing group of people and we are setting up regular classes in all sorts of different modalities so if that is something that you're interested in please do feel free to avail yourself of that link right Sag let's see what's going on with you can I have three cards for Sagittarius please mm, there's the first one we have the five of wands let's flip oh lord flip this around so you can see what I'm looking at and we've got five of wands there what about current energy for and so we have the Page of Swords in your current energy. And what's coming towards Sagittarius, please? We have the Ace of Wands. Page of Pentacles there at the bottom of the deck. What a fucking clusterfuck this desk is, honestly. Let's move your coins out of the way. <clears throat> so we would see very strongly <clears throat> that the focus here is on... Uh, new beginnings of some sort. And I don't remember what we talked about specifically last month, but um, I think it felt kind of big. Maybe it'll come to me during the course of this reading. Um, and what's so very clear just from the cards that are on the table is how much of a process this is. Um, there are changes ahead, for sure. But... The Five of Wands and the Ace of Wands seem very, very closely connected to me. Right? The, the Aces are the seeds. They contain the pure potential of whatever suit they represent. So with the Ace of Wands, we've got a new way of living. We've got new sources of inspiration and creativity and that kind of thing. But when you put these together, what you've got is the Six of Wands. And it's almost like the pieces of the puzzle coming together and suddenly the point is revealed to you. That is the way that I'm feeling about it. I'm going to get some clarifiers out on the table. And we'll put some meat on the bones of this. Let's have a look. Tell me about the Five of Wands. Why is that here for Sagittarius, please? We have Seven of Cups. And we have the Eight of Pentacles. Interestingly arriving in the reverse, which is an uh, ah, interesting place for it to be. Tell me about the Page of Swords. Two of Wands. And the Hanged Man, interesting as well. What about the Ace of Wands, please? Ten of Swords. Oof. And the High Priestess coming out to play too. Now, we've got the Six of Cups at the bottom of the deck there. Let me put these in a way that it makes them a little bit more readable. We can see what's going on. Yeah. Not a lot of major arcana in the grand scheme of things appearing in your reading here this month. Um, but I don't actually think that it's that important because, you know, the, the major arcana are the big universal energies that happen at us, right? They are the, the, the distinct archetypes within the tarot um, that represent some sort of... Uh, Hmm. some sort of lesson often that is kind of trudging our way, right? And then the minor arcana becomes the way that we choose to respond to it, right? And there's this notion that there are cycles within cycles at all times. Now, the fact that you have these two Piscean cards, and these are the most passive cards in the Zodiac, suggests to me that that rather than this being big archetypal energies that are happening at you and you're like fuck i need to come up with some sort of response it feels to me more like you are kind of mm, almost allowing yourself to be absorbed by whatever lesson it is that you have been learning lately and perhaps it is as simple sagittarius for you as not everything requires an action from you i yeah the internal tuning fork is going off there. Um, <clears throat> sometimes being passive, bear with me, please don't scream. Sometimes being passive is the right thing to do in any given situation, right? It doesn't require you to interfere. So 
in some way what you're doing is kind of sinking into this state of acceptance into this uh state of uh, let's say kind of peace actually Sagittarius now I'm thinking about it in the fact that you don't have to do everything all the time now we start off with this five of wands and it's not generally a comfortable card although I think for fire signs it has a slightly different flavor than it does for the others right because it can talk about on the one hand competition Right, and that's something quite, you know, fire sign esque. That's Saturn in Leo, right? So it talks about the struggle. It talks about um, the state of competition. You know, where you are being forced to, you know, fight or dig deep or in some way kind of uh, allow something to be <sighs> shaken up. I think with the promise of the six of wands that comes after it. And the six of wands is victory and success. And it's so bizarre. In this last, oh, I know, month, maybe six weeks, I found it really difficult to separate the five and the six of wands. Like, they almost come as a bit of a homogenous lump, or at least they should do. And the problems come when we focus only on the five of wands and we lose sight of the six. Um, or when we focus too hard on what we think is the right outcome in something. And it changes the nature of the way that we struggle, sometimes making things harder for ourselves. You know, at the other end of the spectrum, you have pure conflict. And this can be, you know, a, an external conflict that you've had with other people. You know, the Five of Wands has a feeling of sort of going to war in some sort of way, right? Or it can be an internal struggle. And I think for most of you, it's been an internal struggle, a state of conflict being pulled one way or another. And, you know, as I'm recording this on the last day of May, you know, we are kind of crawling out from underneath that fixed grand cross uh, that has been sitting in the sky for a number of weeks now, right? Uh, well, let me get this right. We have Mars and Leo on one side. I had Pluto and Aquarius on the other, which interestingly was also being squared by Jupiter and Taurus. And then we had the North and the South nodes at play. And whenever the North and the South nodes are um, being activated, in the way that we we are doing and and specifically in a in a fixed situation what we've got is something being shaken loose right we've got a sense of upheaval and i do feel like particularly because we see these two pisces cards here these two kind of cards of of the internal the passive the the sitting still and letting things play out the way that they will um what's what what has been freed in you is the need to respond is the need to be um actively active in a way that a fire sign would understand we've got the seven of cups and the eight of pentacles in reverse and to be honest the eight of pentacles makes more sense in the reverse here than it would do in the upright you know we're talking about a solid commitment with the eight of pentacles because eventually this this is a as a card that speaks to mastery of some sort right but in order to get there first one has to be completely committed to the path, right? Completely committed to creating these pentacles. And, you know, we can talk about it in terms of work and, you know, your, your literal job, what you do to earn pentacles. But there's something much more philosophical about the way that I've been seeing your readings in the last couple of months, right? They're, they're less about what you're doing and they're more about the way that you are changing within. And this is very subtle, in some ways, this might not be visible to other people. Um, perhaps it's something that you're only kind of vaguely aware of yourself, and yet you sense the shift. You know, the Sagittarians don't get the credit that they are due for being sensitive. I, th I think there are a few signs that are uh, underrepresented in the sensitive category. Or, or under acknowledged in the sensitive Capri uh, category, uh, Capricorn would be another one, Sagittarius, you know. This way around, it speaks to much more of a hands-off kind of approach. Now, it could be that there has been something in your immediate environment that does sort of affect you and sort of doesn't. And normally, under different situations, certainly under a, a different version of you, you would be leaping in to do something about this. I mean, maybe it involves people that you care about. Um, maybe maybe a former version of you would just be all up in, in the business of a different situation. 
But we've had this Seven of Cups in the mix too, and that specifically speaks to emotional confusion, or perhaps to a degree, emotional illusion too. You know, we've got a man here silhouetted literally in the dark, if you will, and he's looking at all of these cups, he's looking at all of the possibilities, um, and he's being asked to pick one. And you know, he's literally in a state like this, being like, I don't know what to do here, <laughs> Fuck. which one of these cups is the right one for me. Whereas the Eight of Pentacles in, in the upright would say, well, you just need to really focus yourself and attend to these things. Right? The, the Eight of Pentacles in reverse has said, actually, you don't need to do that. You don't need to be committed. You don't need to be grinding away at this situation. You, you're actually in a good place to just allow the situation to be what it is. Right? A certain amount of faith and trust that whatever is going on, at some point, the path forwards will reveal itself. You know, it's almost like you've taken a much more detached view of what the Six of Wands represents. And I've been seeing this actually quite a lot for, for some of the other signs too, in so much as you know, we're losing that attachment to outcome. Now, I think this is something that, that Sagittarius has always had a bit of a, uh, a fractious relationship with because you have also, you know, you have this ability to live in the moment. And it's, it, it, you know, far surpasses the ability of anybody else in the Zodiac to do that, right? Very much here and the now. What are we doing? How do we have the most fun it's possible for us to have? <clears throat> it's why, you know, Sagittarius is a bit of a trope sometimes. Um, associated with things like recklessness and thoughtlessness and all those kind of things. It's because, like, you know, the consequences of a situation sometimes are not what Sagittarius is focused on. But at the same time, Sagittarius also has that ability to, to let the arrow fly, to know exactly where it's going to land and make their own way to it. You know, it's like you don't need a map. You can just follow the, 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 the end of the arrow and you know you'll get there eventually. There's no real rush to get there. And I think that that possibly has caused a point of tension for you because there are things that you want, but there's also this deep understanding that whatever it is it's going to come when it's fucking ready and not a shred of a second before what a weird way to express that a shred of a second <clears throat> but it's about getting your emotions in the right place in order to come to a state of peace and i think that this has been really hard for you for some reason and i suspect it's something to do with we well, you know not just the fixed grand cross but we also had mercury in retrograde and we also had that absolute stonker of a, uh, a lunar eclipse at the beginning of May and actually even before that we had a solar eclipse just a couple of weeks before. Uh, all of this is, is changing us fundamentally and I think although you might not necessarily have known the way forwards I think that you've got plans for the future and I think that also this kind of quiet fairly fine work that you've been doing on yourself has been centered much more around the idea of connecting with a stream of energy than trying to force your will over the top of it and it's required patience strong patience And in some ways it's required you to, to become disciplined enough to be able to quell the bits of you that want to canter about, do things, push things, you know, find the fun. I said, like, uh, I've mentioned this a few times this month. Um, one of my personal clients, um, emailed me this month and said that he'd been thinking a lot about the difference between fun and happiness and how they weren't one and the same, although we tend to lump them in together. And it was possible to have lots and lots of fun, but at the end of it, when the fun stops, not to be happy. And I bring this up because I think this is something that Sagittarius actually has been exploring in your own way over the last few years. I mean, we associate Sagittarius with fun when the Knight of Wands comes up 
it's adventure, it's spontaneity, it's doing things that are fun, right? At its worst, it can be hedonism and, and you know, self-sabotage and all that kind of thing, right? But, but right there, it's all about fun. And I think part of the Sagittarian experience has been having fun at whatever cost and specifically as a cover for the way in which you were not happy or the ways perhaps they were myriad that you were not happy and being able to focus on the fun meant that that we were in some way distracted from the fact that there was an underlying unhappiness even something approaching sadness about you which I don't feel is quite as strong in you as it has been in the past. And you've done a lot of work on yourself, Sagittarius. And I think you've got to a point where you are able to discern between the two things. And even if things have been a bit shit, which let's face it, they have been at points in the last few years, I feel like you're getting much, much closer to this, to a foundation of happiness. than you ever have done before. It feels new and it feels special and it feels like something that you want to guard at all costs, actually. Except that there isn't really a need to guard it. That's the funny thing that I'm feeling about it here. But this point of tension, whether it is <clears throat> between the idea of fun and happiness, between the need to, to do something now, but also to sit and wait, whether it's not quite knowing sure what to do for the best or what the right right path is for you. It's like you've almost been holding all of these things at the same time and you've been holding them lightly. And you're like, do you know what? Whatever happens. I was talking about this cloak of faith that Sagittarius can put on at will. Whatever happens, it's going to work out for the best. And sometimes in order to have the power in one's life, we don't need to be going around actively doing things all of the time. That is here. Mm. We've got the Hermit. <laughs> the other card of the internal space. Now this is, uh, this is Virgo energy right here. And it does speak to that kind of retreat. You know, it certainly gives some credibility to the idea that the Five of Wands is an internal thing for you rather than you being actively at war or actively in competition with anyone else. It's like you're holding all of the, the, the fine parts of you and saying, well, this is true, but this is also true over here. And this is true, but this is also true. And as things stand at the moment, I don't have enough information, ooh, insufficient data for a meaningful response. Oh, it's my, um, put that in the bio of my WhatsApp for years. It comes from a, a sci-fi story that I read. I fucking loved it. Um, <coughs> and so, in, in on such occasions where there is insufficient data for a meaningful response, being able to sit with that, being able to hold that, almost being able to hold contradictory points within yourself and hold them lightly, uh, I think this is where this legendary ability for Sagittarians to pivot comes from. But it's coming from a really healthy place now. It's not a pivoting of, oh fuck, something's deep and dark and emotional and I cannot fucking deal with that. I'm going to run off in a different direction. It's like, I recognise that there are contradictions that exist within my psyche. And actually, I'm okay with that. Because at some point, the way forward will be revealed. And because I'm holding everything lightly... I'll be able to go as soon as I want to. Now, when we move into your current energy, we've got the Page of Swords. And I do think about this in terms of mental expansion, right? The Page of Swords is an information gatherer. And sometimes when we see it in the um, in the reverse, it can indicate a you know, kind of stalkery kind of energy, interestingly enough. But because the swords are all to do with uh, the way that we think, the way that we communicate, the way that we express ourselves, the way that we listen, the way that we, you know, the way that we gather information. And Sagittarians, I, you're unsurpassed in your ability to be observant about stuff. It's a byproduct of being absolutely in the moment all the time, right? 
It seems to me that you're quite content at this point to just allow the information to keep coming in. I, there, there isn't a sense of judgment over the information that you're receiving. It could be that you, you know, yeah, it's, your sensitivities have taken a bit of a step up. So you're paying attention to things that even you ordinarily might not have noticed, you know, subtle shifts in people's body language, you know, but, but I feel like for most of you, it's actually being able to, we're back to this idea of the pieces in the puzzle. It's like you're fleshing out an idea that you had or, or a, a way of viewing a situation or even a way that you understand that reality works. And getting so much additional information that it's fleshing it out and it's giving you a picture that is full of depth and full of meaning. And in some ways you're almost like a passive consumer of this, which is not something that you would usually expect of Sagittarius to be a passive consumer of anything but it's like it's flowing in and there's no judgment being made of it it's just like oh there's another piece of the puzzle stick that in there and then that bit in there but bit by bit it's revealing this picture that you didn't see before I mean for a lot of you I could absolutely see this as the deepening of a bond with a with a partner or with a friend or with a family member because as more information is coming in and you're, you're able to put it together, you're able to join these things up. It's like your understanding is increasing exponentially. And it's still very hands off. That's the interesting thing. Now we've got the two of wands there and we've got the hangman. The two of wands represents, well, it's, a, it's a wands card, right? So we've got activity again. But because it's a two, it's talking about an internal situation, right? So for me, the, the two of wands absolutely does represent that crossroads moment. And sometimes we talk about it in terms of, you know, arriving at a T-junction and we've got a decision to make as to whether we go left or whether we go right. And the idea is it's taking you off in very different directions. Um, <clears throat> and so we sit in a state of um, contemplation, right? We walk through mentally the consequences of going one way or another, which is in and of itself an interesting idea because of what I just said about you know a lack of consideration of consequences in the past and then from there we decide which way we want to go the thing is I think that you're quite happy to be sat at the crossroads at this point and I don't feel like there's a decision making process even showing itself as necessary to you it's like no I'm going to sit here I'm just going to let the information keep flowing in and flowing in. I am doing nothing about it. I am literally suspending myself. I am waiting for the picture to finally emerge to make perfect sense. Now, the other way that I see the two of, two of uh, ones, and this has been actually since about Christmas, it, it began to develop this way, was the very, very small decisions that we make every day, right? You know, instead of it being one big decision to go that way or one big decision to go the other, what we've got is an awareness, an increasing awareness of the tiny little decisions that we make every day, almost on autopilot, right? We don't give them too much thought. We just do them or we don't do them, you know? And a recognition of just how important those micro, de micro decisions are in terms of the direction of travel that we go. You know, I've been seeing this a lot for, for the signs generally over June, this idea that, <sighs> that everything is significant this month, that there's nothing that you should allow to pass unscrutinized in some sort of way. For you, I would adjust that slightly because it doesn't seem to me that scrutiny is necessary. I would say, pay attention because everything is important. Pay attention because every little piece of information that's coming to you this month is a little piece of the puzzle that's going in, you know, and although you don't necessarily know the direction of travel yet, you don't know which way you're supposed to be going, it's not really what the lesson is about here for you at this point it's about allowing the information to come in and settle where it may right it's almost like a hands-off approach because the picture is going to build itself 
And the only thing that you need to do is keep yourself well in the middle of it. And the hangman talks about submission. It can sometimes talk about sacrifice, but it absolutely does talk about stasis. And it talks about putting yourself in an uncomfortable position voluntarily and staying there because of the perspective that it can bring. Now, several years ago, I don't think that you could have held peacefully a static pose, like right? energetically speaking, because possibly you were running away from things emotionally, spiritually, whatever. Um, perhaps you were, you know, avoiding situations and people. It's like, like no, I'm going to pivot. I'm going to go off that way. What's being retained here is the ability to pivot at any time that you choose, but also on top of it, this voluntary stasis. It's like. I am peacefully just going to accept everything and allow it to come in, right? I am aware that I am potentially at somewhat of a crossroads, but if you think about it, a hundred times a day, you're at a crossroads. Just taking the mind off autopilot and becoming very conscious about the decisions, every decision that you make, every little piece of information that comes in. There's something really expansive about the way that you are allowing yourself to exist in the middle of it. That's the best way that I can put it. I've got the temperance card. Now that is Sagittarius right there. It's a card that speaks about healing. It also speaks about balance and moderation and that sense of you being able to, again, as I was talking about, hold all of these possibly contrary, possibly contradictory um, positions, you know, having, you know, desire to go in one direction, but knowing that there's wisdom in staying where you are until the picture has finished assembling itself. Very, very strong, but also very authentically you, Sagittarius. Now, we talk about Sajid a lot in terms of the uh, the Knight of Wands, and there are a, a lot of negative connotations to that card, like I've said. But Sagittarius is also the Temperance card, and Sagittarius is also the Wheel of Fortune. And when the Temperance card appears, what we're talking about is that kind of alchemical reaction of transformation and transmutation of pain, possibly, of certainly our default. And again, I think there's something about your default mode, Sagittarius, that has been shifted altogether in favor of something much more peaceful, much more Zen. But then at the same time, we've also got this idea of, of divine guidance and divine timing and all of those things. And I feel like you are actually living up to the archetype of temperance in that respect by putting on your cloak and going, mm, I got my faith. Everything will happen exactly as it's supposed to. Everything will happen at the time that it is supposed to. The people involved will appear as they are supposed to. You know, everything about this screams, well, not only are you being like way adult Sagittarius in a way that I'm finding slightly intimidating right now, I have to say, um, <coughs> there's growth here. There's huge growth here. And you are being temperance. No need to shift too far either direction. Hold everything lightly. Hold everything in balance. Put on the cloak of faith. And know that everything will work itself out in time as it is supposed to. There's something fucking inspirational about this, Saj, and I'm loving it for you somebody who's being a bit chaotic personally at the moment like th this is cool as fuck um and there's that funny thing although it may be flying somewhat under the radar of most people i know be like such as a bit calm at the moment not really much going on with them they've no idea quite what you're doing inside at this point there's some uh, it's almost like a graceful ballet that's the only way that i can describe it right it's just Everything's being held. Everything's wonderful. It's awesome. 
it's putting you in a very good place, I think, not only spiritually and emotionally, but I do get a sense that there is something, that the wheels are in motion here. And maybe that's something that you're aware of too, right? You, you feel the kind of cogs of the universe moving and they might be a bit slow and a little bit stiff, but they are moving and there is nothing required from you at this point other than to maintain this position in the middle. So when we come into June, we have the Ace of Wands. And as I was saying right at the beginning, the Aces are seeds. Their pure potential right, of whatever suit they represent. So in the ones case, creativity, passion, the way that you actually live, the things that you do when you're moving, right? Moving at all, moving around, you know, using your body, making your blood pump, that kind of thing, right? It could represent, you know, a new exercise regime or something like that, but I don't think it's anywhere near as flat as that. It's just possible, right? Um, sometimes when you see it in... Um, tandem with the ace of pentacles it can be talking about you know setting up a new business or something like that right we've got got drive and motivation to create something solid that other people can can see but we have just the ace of wands in in isolation here and like the pages obviously the idea is that it is initiatory right it's starting something now where the pages and the aces differ from me is that the ace is something entirely new the ace is something that you have not experienced before. And I think with this phoenix, it's safe to say that there's something canny transformational about the, what it represents, right? There's something in your life that is very much being done differently, whether that's by way of physical investment of you um, or whether it is tapping into something creative that has been up until this point dormant. The pages for me tend to take something that you already have and expand it or send it off in a different direction. Right? So here, the Page of Swords, we've got that information coming in, right? It, it is expanding your awareness, right? Your ability to be able to mentally process everything that's going on. The Page of Pentacles is, is actually like the Page of Swords, also known, to, known as a student card. But it talks about the value of things. It talks about the worth of things. So we can talk about it in terms of money and financial things. After all, it is a pentacle and so there's a practical aspect to it for sure. But I see the pentacles as energetic currency. So just as there was a no need to invest over here, what we've got is a willingness to invest, right? I see the value of something and I want to create more of those things. Right? I want to I want to take this thing that I've got in the pages case, a singular pentacle, and I want to expand it. I want to make more of it. I want to take it possibly in a different direction. When we're talking about worth, the pentacle suit for me can often represent self-investment. Right? We see that most pertinently with the Queen of uh, Pentacles. But the page is the beginning of a journey where worth and value are being considered. And I think that we can absolutely talk about self-worth and self-value there, but we can talk about lots of other things that we invest ourselves into. Right? So the people that are around us, what is the value of that? Do we want to invest in this more? Do we want to build something? Do we want to grow something with people? But the fact that it's come up with the Six of Cups, which is related to your past in some sort of way, right? It represents the past. And so it's not usually the recent past. It's usually going back much further than that. We're talking about childhood. But it can also represent children. And it can also represent like past life shit that you've brought with you as well. What it seems to be here is that there's some sort of burgeoning sense of value that you are understanding from the past as you have lived it. It's almost like everything here is holistically rewriting the narrative of your past. It, it doesn't actually require any active engagement from you at all. And this sense of you kind of like sinking into an idea of, um, well, sinking into a different perspective, sinking into the um, to the idea that sometimes inaction is the best route forwards, 
right? When you don't know what to do, you don't need a career around and do loads of things anyway, right? That's probably where you're going to start getting into the realms of self-sabotage and getting destructive with stuff. It's like, no, nah, we can be patient. And there's something about the, specifically the pain of the past that you are now starting to understand to the degree that you are actually getting some value from it. You're getting some benefit from it. What do we have here? Ten of Swords, again, sitting underneath this page of pentacles. You know, maybe there's a realisation that you could not, or at least it would be exceedingly unlikely, you could not have arrived at the point that you are now. Where everything is ready to change and you feel really good about not only the changes, but the things that remain static, the things that are solid. Without having experienced what was truly fucking awful beforehand. You know, I spoke earlier about perhaps, you know, an increasing bond with a partner that you've had. Oh, well, maybe a succession of shitty relationships have led you to a place where you can appreciate a good thing when it's in front of you now, where perhaps you couldn't do it before. Maybe it's something else. Maybe, you know, the relationship that you've had with your own trauma has given you insight into other people's. And there's correspondingly this kind of... I remember a few years ago, fuck, it was probably about three years ago now, actually. I said that there was something really angelic about Sagittarius. And so the rest of the Zodiac went, what the fuck are you talking about? But there is. Like, every Sagittarian that I've ever met has always given me this weird energetic impression that, that they almost struggle to keep their wings tucked into side, inside their, their meat suits, right? Their, their bodies. There was a constant struggle trying to keep them down. And I say this as somebody who, who has known a lot of Sagittarians, right? I just seem to attract them into, into my field, which is cool because I enjoy it. But it's that sense of being completely unaware of how very fucking good you are. Right? Just, just good. Just a good person. Right? Yes, you've made mistakes the same as everybody else. But as you've worked through your own crap, like the wings are getting difficult, more and more difficult to keep kind of wedged down. Like they're... It's like that scene from uh, X-Men. You know, I, I really fucking upset me that. like Because I can't bear to see kids upset. It, it's a kid in the fucking bathroom and he's soaring like he's soaring like grinding off his own fucking wing nubs with a with a file because you know his his mutant gene his his big fucking angel wings and then later on in the film you know he stands there all sort of proud and he just goes Poof, and his huge fucking wings come out and i feel like there's something there like in that second scene that we've been experiencing with sagittarius for quite a while now And I talked about this kind of area of effect of healing that Sagittarius's bring to the table. Again, something that the other signs in the zodiac around don't really think that they understand a lot. But I see it in you. And I think that where we are now is a position where you are much more comfortable in letting those wings out, right? It's like the authentic version of you doesn't have to be fun 100% of the time. It doesn't have to be active 100% of the time. Sometimes it can just be, and that's okay. And the, the, the biggest development there is that you are allowing yourself to just be and just stand there and just be, you know, healing as fuck in the area that you're affecting. And that's okay. And the reason that I bring this up is because it's this sense of the past trauma and the value of the past trauma that seems to be increasing your ability to make a fucking difference by doing nothing Sagittarius what the fuck does that even mean I don't know <clears throat> it's like in in computer games like you have an area of effect right I used to play command and conquer a lot I fucking loved it right but then you had the fog of war and you know as you would move around the fog would clear your area effect of effect was essentially like what you could perceive within, you know, the circle of stuff that was clear. The range of weapons, if you will, right? The, the range of tanks and shit.
And just as in the fog of war, you don't have to do anything to clear the fog of war. It just kind of clears when you're walking around. I feel like that's what energetically you're doing at the moment. And there's something so authentically you about it right in the centre. But there's something that's giving so much benefit to the people around you at the same time. Which in turn is also giving you more things. Things that you now realise that you need that you never did before. I mean, it's, it's like this is constant feedback loop that's happening that's getting stronger and stronger the more you're submitting to it, Sagittarius. It's something really, really powerful about the way that you are showing up in the world right now. And I think it's because you believe it. You know, Sagittarius is, is associated with philosophy and belief, self-belief particularly. But I think you're starting to get a handle on how little you have believed in yourself or how little you've believed in your own self-worth and these kind of things up until this point because now you're actually feeling it. And it feels fucking awesome, like... Ten of Swords and the High Priestess. The Ten of Swords is, is an ending. Um, specifically, it can be a canny, brutal ending, to be honest. It can, you know, we've got somebody here, it's got, we've got these fucking swords in his spine, right? It's, it's a far from comfortable position. However, we've already established that you've got pretty fucking comfortable at being uncomfortable. For you, the, the discomfort is in standing still and doing nothing but you're allowing it to happen. For a Taurus, that's a perfect situation, right? That's fucking nice. You know, getting out of a comfort zone would involve Taurus moving faster than they want to. For you, it's quite the reverse. It's like, well, you have to slow down. We have to be peaceful. We have to be Zen. But the have to be, it actually isn't forming part of the equation. It's, I am peaceful. I am Zen. I am content with not moving because the situation doesn't require me to move. This is incredibly advanced spiritual awareness, Sagittarius. And so, like I said, we've got all of the kind of negative connotations of the Ten of Swords there, but all tens hold within them the promise of something new because they are the end of a cycle. They represent the end of this particular cycle and from there, where do we go? We tip over into another race again, right? It's that constant cycle of, of oh, the little cycles. There's no end to it, strictly. It's an end and a beginning in and of itself every single time. So just as the dawn is starting to crest here, you know, when we've lost everything, what we can still have is the knowledge that the sun will always rise again, right? It's always darkest before the dawn and all that kind of thing. There's something incredibly positive about the Ten of Swords that I'm feeling here. You know, and maybe it is as simple as knowing that whatever is ailing you now, even if it is just a simple state of not knowing what right direction is to go in, you've been here before. And you've navigated it before, and it's actually nothing to fucking worry about at all, you know. And yeah, we want it to push to, to peak discomfort, because then something shifts, something moves. And we have the High Priestess, okay. Yes, absolutely a card of the internal. She talks about intuition and the wisdom that comes from being passive actually she's not really one for volunteering information she's certainly not one for, for you know jumping up from her chair and, and doing all sorts of active things right she sits there as an oracle as a seat of knowing she's a conduit for the wisdom of the universe to flow through her I think this Ten of Swords represents a situation that has been a little bit stuck for you recently, that is approaching its end. And I love the fact that we go from having an absolute overabundance of swords, as we do here with the Ten of, uh, ten of Swords, which is frankly far too many for anyone, right? We don't like that. To something that's been transmuted into an Ace of Wands instead. Mm. Ten of Swords would happen largely up here. Mm it's about the way that we perceive reality as much as anything else. 
information communication, rationality, logic, those sorts of things, right? Very brain heavy activities. And we're transmuting the difficulties that are caused by the brain into creativity, right? New ways of doing things, new ways of experiencing the world. It feels like a rebirth of sorts. Four of Pentacles. Mm -hmm. And the Eight of Swords. Glorious. Let's get one for the High Priestess, please. Queen of Cups, right there. See? What's coming to an end is restriction, both poss possibly physical restriction, in so much as not being able to make a kind of move that you want. Like I said, you do seem to have had a goal in mind. You do seem to have some sort of direction of travel that you want to follow. We see it here with the Four of Pentacles, possibly. But we also have mental restriction, right? The way that you have been thinking about things. I mean, it, it literally feels like it's peaking in June. And any kind of uh, restrictive thinking that you have been engaged with, I feel like by the end of June, it's all popped up. You've seen it, you've dealt with it, you've pushed it away and you go, I just don't, I, that doesn't need to form part of my psyche anymore. Is the Four of Pentacles can talk about the things that we're holding on to too tightly, right? And there might be a way of thinking about things that you have been holding on to too tightly. And often that happens because the thing that we used to think about, the, the thing that we used to think with is the thing that is in some way kind of slightly broken in the way that it understands the rules of existence and all that sort of stuff, right? But the Four of Pentacles can also talk about actually knowing what is important. Right? That which is so important that it is actually worth holding on to. It is actually worth using it as a base for moving forwards. Right? We've got all of these kind of things flicking across your, your conscious awareness over the month of June. And just like the High Priestess, we've got the Queen of Cups there. Well, the High Priestess, like I said, is as I felt with the, uh, with the Temperance card and with the Hermit and the hanged man is this sense of kind of sinking into the embodiment of the archetype passive knowledgeable wise almost balanced but the queen of cups is a minor arcana card represents the things that you do that also reflect that because the Queen of Cups is, is about receptivity, it's about what you allow in. And sometimes we can allow too much in and that becomes a problem. And sometimes we can not allow enough in and that equally is a problem. And because everything about the way that you are showing up here is invested in the fine work of achieving that balance, the balance that is right for you, Sagittarius, rather than what would be right for other people. Yeah, these cards are absolutely complementary right here. But look how the Queen of Cups is pointing at this. She's asking you to look at where your thinking has been very restricted. She's asking you to, to, to look at, you know, perhaps what you've been willing to let go of because you haven't seen the value in it. Perhaps what you've been holding on to too tightly because you saw the you perceive there to be more value in it than there actually is. Right? Again, it's fine work. And it's interesting how many fucking signs this idea of fine work is coming up in June. You know, like I said, everybody else has got this idea of kind of scrutinising all of the information that comes in. For you, not so. You know, you have to let this picture unfold as it will, right? Create itself. What it is for you is to just absorb all of this information and allow it to passively, passively allow it to form in front of you. But June's going to be a big month for working out what is important and what isn't, as well as showing you where you might have been thinking about things in the wrong way, because there's a sense here that it is coming to an end and you're breaking out of that. And, you know, the, the, the cumulative effect of all of these cards together is the Ace of Wands. This can be a new venture of some sort. But it can just 
be the opening up of a new level of existence that's that's there for you for the taking that perhaps you just didn't see before right maybe it's even a new hobby or something like that but it feels it feels like a little bit small for the kind of energy that i'm seeing supporting this it could well be a total change like for some of you it might be might actually be movement altogether right it might be you know movement of you you might be traveling you might be doing something really fucking exciting that you haven't done before But I feel like wherever it is in June, you've got the ability to perceive now ways in which you, maybe it's even for some of you, it's realising the extent to which your culture has conditioned you to certain assumptions or, or accepting certain things. What I see in June is for you actually to be questioning everything. In so much as we're not passively passively absorbing, um, <clears throat> no, no, hang on, let's get this, let me speak properly. <sighs> we're not doing anything on autopilot. Everything has that conscious awareness, conscious attention. Whether or not it's time to do anything with it, I think there'll be far more action for you in July than there is in June. But at the same time, there's this possibility. It's possibilities opening up. And it's possibilities opening up because the way that you are thinking about the world is changing. Because this bigger picture is starting to take shape in front of you. I hope that this makes sense, Sagittarius. So I'm going to go to Vimeo now. Mm, that's interesting. I've just noticed that the world card's at the bottom of the deck. I didn't see that before. End of a cycle for sure perhaps end of a small cycle and end of a big cycle that's coming in together. Um, I'm going over to Vimeo. If you would like to talk about this a little bit more, and we will be looking specifically at June rather than, you know, the surrounding times, then please do feel free to come join me over on Vimeo or on Circle, whichever you prefer. Um, but if not, that's not your bag. Like, no problem. Just, I see you, Sagittarius. I see what you're doing. And I love it. I'm here for it all day long. So keep fucking doing that because it's so fucking evolved. Like I said, it's so fucking adult. I, I'm actually a little bit intimidated by it. <clears throat> You're doing really well. I'm really proud of you. So know that I love you all very, very much. And I'll see you soon.